in Scripture, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we gather at this site today to bring Richard Mervyn Cohen to his final rest, to his final resting place. You knew him as father, or father-in-law, or grandfather, or I don't know what he might have called you. Or <laughs> yeah. um, and we also remember him today as a veteran who served our nation. We honor him at this place and in this hour. We honor and shall never forget his contribution to your family and to your country. Richard Mervyn Cohen, age 77, passed away peacefully at home Saturday, July the 5th, 2014. He was born June the 23rd, 1937, in Miami, Florida, to the late William Richard and Catherine Florence Stoner Cohen. Richard served as an air crewman in the Navy in the Korean conflict, and his obituary describes him as a Bible-believing soul winner retired as pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Morrisville, North Carolina. While he was serving at Calvary, Richard also worked more than 30 years at Ivy before retiring. He survived by four daughters, two sons, many grandchildren, and great grandchildren, and one mother. Maybe one mother. Gracious God, you bring us into this world through our families, and through our communities. And we give you thanks for this member of family, of community, who has left us. We ask that in this time of remembering him and of honoring him, that you will be present with each of us in powerful ways. In your holy name we pray. <coughs> As you know, David, I wasn't fortunate enough to get to know your dad, but from what I've heard, he must have been a well-rounded guy. Um, anyone who can work for IBM for 30 years and be a pastor <laughs> has kind of a broad range of gifts, I would say. The description I read from the obituary that he was a Bible-believing soul winner, we say BBSW in seminary, um, tells a lot about you, tells a lot about you. I loved the condolence from Kim Pace from Paducah, Kentucky, who wrote about that part of his life. What a blessing Brother Dick was to me and my family and to the world. He knew how to talk and reach people and introduce and to encourage them to turn their life to Jesus. I think he would have loved that tribute. We remember him today. We grieve his death and we celebrate his life. I want to read a psalm that he surely would have read many, many times as a pastor for other people as they said goodbye to their loved ones as they let them go to rest. From Psalm 23. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Brother Cohen, Mr. Cohen, has taken his own walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and he is safe and at peace now on the other side. There are three brief things that I want to lift up from this scripture, this ancient passage. Anybody here know shepherds? Anybody connect with shepherd in them? They're not around much these days, are they? Um, but I think it's still a meaningful comparison. Shepherds are the ones who went out into danger to try to keep the sheep safe. In this passage, God's described as the shepherd who watches over us in the midst of life. That does not mean that our life doesn't have very difficult things, and I'm sure that your dad's life had its own challenges. But it does mean that God is with us. 
Secondly, we might think of those in the military, our veterans, as our modern day shepherds. They work, they sacrifice, they take great risk to try to keep us safe and free. And third, we ourselves can shepherd each other as we breathe. Each of you had a different relationship with Mr. Cohen, or perhaps didn't know him. Um, but you also will grieve in different ways because of that. So I encourage you to be patient with each other, to support each other in the ways that you might be. So today you're both saying goodbye and figuring out how to hold on in a different way to remember Mr. Benjamin. What did y'all call it? Pops. Pops. Yeah. Pops. Yeah. Pops. Everybody went to it. Yeah. Did you call him Pops too? Yeah. Well, all right. So you did get to know him. Oh, yeah. Great. So um, you'll be remembering and trying to figure out how to say goodbye. And that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> In some mysterious way, Pops, Dad, is still and will always be with you. In another way, he is defined definitely not for us. Before we go to lay Mr. Herman to his final resting place, I'd like to close with a brief poem that talks about how people are a part of us through our memories and always are a part of us. Now. At the rising of the sun and at its going down, we remember at the blowing of the wind and at the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick of heart, we remember them. When we have joys and special times we want to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are a part of us. We remember them. I hope you have many good memories, good memories of him that you will cherish. And I hope that any painful memories, because usually there are some of those, will over time be healed for Thanks to God.